That's right. Now, the, if you if you lo- look beyond the oil, you'll see that the plates come together. The the building blocks of uh, of land masses right at that area. It's the end of the fall line uh, coming down the Mississippi right there. So you're going to see more and more earthquakes maybe in Mexico down at the other end of that. You'll see earthquakes accelerate. If that oil ever depletes and you have have a giant cavern underneath and the frigid ice water goes into that hot earth, you could have a major catastrophe uh, that could very well cause the um, the splitting of the line all the way up to the Great Lakes. So it's theoretically possible. So the move, the alleged move of the federal government that's slowly, ever so slowly moving some of their their agencies to Denver, could this be a reason? I think uh, the, the the conclusion is the same. I don't know if they moved it because of this incident, but i think, uh, oh, well, you know, for the last 40 or 50 years, they've been digging under the um, mountains. Um, the entrance to the underground uh, government center is in Culpeper, Virginia, and Warrenton, Virginia, right outside of Washington. They have uh, streetcar lines running uh, under those tunnels for government workers and government agencies. So that's been going on for 40 or 50 years. And uh, all over the United States, uh, states have been digging underground. We have one here in Richmond, Virginia, that was recently completed in the in the front lawn of Mr. Jefferson's state capitol. It's 27,000 square feet under the lawn, 57 feet down, and they called it a visitor's center. Spent $20 million to dig the hole. And, and that's being duplicated all over the United States right now. All states are doing that and putting their governments underground for what's coming. They know what's coming. Because it's with a, what money? It's a, yes, with the, the labor of the people. The dollar is collapsing. We expect the dollar to be uh, be totally collapsed by the end of this year. And uh, God only knows what's going to happen. There's no precedent for that. There's nothing in history anywhere in the world that will equal what will happen once that occurs. And it, it need not happen. There's no reason for that to happen because all of the currencies in the world are backed by nothing. They're just pieces of paper. You could change all of it with a pencil and make everything right again. It's theoretically possible to do because there is no uh, gold or precious metals or precious anything uh, backing any of the currencies in the world. So it's a deliberate thing. I personally think that uh, there is a, a plan to to dump the uh, paper and the coins for the debit monetary system that they've been working on for the last 30 years, 40 years, with barcodes and uh, switch over to the debit. That's what I personally think. You know, Griff, when you tell people that uh, we are turning into a fascist country, they'll look at you as if you were a conspiracy theorist. But all you need to do is to find the definition of the word fascism, which simply means that corporations have taken over. And my conversation with James Fox yesterday almost confirmed it. Instead of seeing military helicopters flying by and and perhaps helping the Army Corps of Engineers, he's seen helicopters with the Chevron labels. It's almost as as if the oil companies are taking over that area. Where is the government here to supersede what they're doing? As I said before, if BP is not able to control this, shouldn't the government come in and, and tell them to step aside and find their other other resources, perhaps bring other companies to help? Well, I don't know that there are any other companies that have the technical expertise to do the job one mile down. I think uh, BP probably has a monopoly on it. Who would you bring in, Mel? That there must be other oil companies that may have different technology if this one is not happening. I mean, what I'm talking about is, do you see any cooperation with, between BP and others, or is it just BP monopolizing the, the disaster relief effort? Well, I said publicly n- numerous times that I believe the American government with Obama and his criminals are fascist. Uh, we don't have a government. We don't have a c- central uh, body, uh, as, as we did at one time in this country, that has the interest of the people at heart. Um, I, I don't trust the government. I don't trust corporations. 
Um, I, I personally think that all of our efforts should be focused on self and family and, and, and the survival of self and family at this point. I don't think you're going to turn it around. Um, a number of reasons for that, but I, I think we're way past the 11th hour. And I just, just to be fair, I don't think that the Bush administration was any different. I mean, we can look at Katrina. There was also a media blackout in, in many places there. I just heard from people who, who were in Mississippi when Katrina happened, and they are telling me all the stories that the, the media never told. I remember the one story that came out of Mississippi. Some of the, some of the Mississippi folk over there had a truckload, a tractor-trailer load of food and supplies sent in to them. They paid for it with their money. And once they were, uh, it had been delivered to them at their houses, uh, they were unloading it, and the sheriff and FEMA men walked up uh, with guns on their hips and demanded the food, that they turn over the food to the government. All of the people in Mississippi that were standing around were armed, and they had their rifles, and they aimed their rifles at the FEMA people and sheriff and said no. The sheriff and FEMA backed down, and that was the end of that incident, but I never forgot that. Isn't that a great story? It is a great story. Griff, if this continues, if this oil spill finally gets to the shores to the point that the media blackout will be inefficient, what's going to happen? People who are going to help, fishermen who are turning into a cleanup crew now, are reporting headaches, are, they can't breathe, and that's, that's miles and miles away, away from the shore. What happens when this comes to shore? I don't think any of this was by accident. I don't think that uh, oil platform exploded by itself. Uh, there, there were too many reasons, and neither do I think the Oklahoma City um, building, the federal building, exploded from the outside, a truckload of fertilizer. Neither do I think airplanes brought down the three buildings in, in um, New York. I, I think conspiracy is a good word. It's occurred all through our history. There was a conspiracy to uh, uh, shoot uh, Kennedy. There was a conspiracy to shoot Abraham Lincoln. Uh, there's been just hundreds of conspiracies. It's a perfectly good word, and I, I suspect this, this also. You could not have picked a better platform and a better location to bring a country down and to cause 40 million people to be lo relocated. The question is, what are you going to do with 40 million people, and how are you going to feed them? And it's chilling to think of the answer. There is no way to feed 40 million people. There is no way to house those people. But yet plans are obviously in place to relocate them. And I think... Where? That, good question. The only, the only answer that comes to mind, if, if you view it as taking care of the people, if you view it like that, you would say put them in the FEMA camps, but don't lock the door. But now, if you're a fascist government, that, that's a different light entirely. Uh, if I were the people, I would not get on any ships with the government in charge. I don't have the answer to that. But I do believe you, you could see this coming a long time ago. In fact, we talked about it a long time ago, about the uh, benzene, the smell, the fume, and especially, especially when the hurricanes start popping and it picks up uh, um, um, 10,000 gallons of petrol, benzene, oil, and dumps it on the cities and dumps it into the, into the soil, into the food supply, into the water supplies. It dumps it on the people, uh, on the animals, on the vegetation. Um, you won't be able to survive that. So they're, they're building and they're planning to uh, evacuate those people. And I, I suspect that's that's probably a piece of the secrecy. Griff, Goldman Sachs sold a lot of the holdings, their BP holdings, days or weeks before this happened. And a, f a few days before this happened, Tony Hayward, the CEO of the BP, sold one-third of his holdings. What CEO sells one-third of his holdings out of the blue? Now, some people may say, well, Mel, it's, it's not 100%, so he's not raising any flags. Anybody's entitled to it. And he just paid his mansion in Kent, in England. Doesn't that raise suspicions that he knew what was coming? Perhaps uh, somebody leaked it and, and said, hey, your job may be on the line, so you might as well start dumping some of your holdings. 
What's your take on that? Well, the take is obvious uh, that he probably was told that this was scheduled to happen. And he got out as best he could with as little as he could convert. And of course, this is all speculation. But if we're seeing that, that these, these people, Goldman Sachs, the CEO of BP, sold these shares, it's, it's, they must have known that something was coming. The question in everybody's mind is, 